Well, this is interview with Yeti. Let's get started. Oh, oh silent. Dang it. Let's try, let's try. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> and I like how we said like the, these uh, soundproof walls yeah. were set up to completely avoid that. Yeah. And we ruined it. Sorry. <laughs> that was Mark farting. Yeah, that was that was totally me and my guess. Lay, it's so amazing to see you. It's again. nice to see you too. Yeah. Dude. So, uh, Last last year we were talking about day five and and what's gonna happen to your character. We know what happened to your character. Did I? I hadn't come on yet, right? By that point. No, you would. You were just, just starting I, to like I tease. Left. Yeah, you left. Okay. And we got the the radio broadcast mm -hmm. at that point. Mm -hmm. And then you, you found out we were lovers. It was amazing. It's like the ship has sailed. Yeah. Um. It it the the relationship that that you had on on screen was, I mean, it was it hot was hot and sexy. Yeah. Okay. I mean, frankly, cool. this interview's over. Uh, oh, thank you. <laughs> <that's all. laughs> but um, with how we left the character at the end of season one, mm -hmm. but you haven't watched season one, just, just go watch it. Um, where where do you see the future? Are we? Do you think we're going to see her again? Do you? Well, I mean, you can't answer that question. <laughs> Dang, dude. Yeah. No, because I because I, I we just talked to Josh and, and what did like, Josh say? Well, I, I asked him, are we ever going to really see? Don't know. What did Josh say? <laughs> <laughs> um, I asked him if we were ever going to see the hospital again. I tried to be as general as possible, uh -huh. and he's like, mm, "Did you say general hospital?" Maybe. He said, "Maybe." I had the theme song stuck in my head. Nice. Yeah, yeah. the '94 one, not not the new one. Uh, I'm way too specific. <laughs> but, <laughs> but but what now that now that we know the season one arc? Yeah. What what did it take to bring that type of like? Because she's not a villain. No. No. Very pragmatically. She's thought. trying to do the best thing possible exactly. for humanity mm -hmm. that is left. And sometimes a couple of kids get killed in the process of trying to save humanity. Mm. It's much like uh, current current day life. Oh damn, Mark. Yes, it's much like current day life. <laughs> I mean, well, okay. So last year we talked about porn. I'm trying to bring it back. Porn? Just it's a porn. We can just go back to porn. We don't even have to segue into it. We can just start. So anyway, porn. Hold on. That's that's in the third part of the interview. Let's uh, actually. I wanted to talk to you about last year. You had talked about just wrapping up some film projects. Right. And uh, I got a chance to watch both of them. Oh, which and, ones? Uh, I don't feel I don't feel at home in this world anymore, which nice. is on Netflix. Yeah. Awesome. Loved your character in that. Yeah. Thanks. And uh, well, well, let's let's start with that one. Okay. What what is the what is the onset relationship when you're working with your significant other? What 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 is that like? And we'll we'll talk about Mustang Island later. But starting with that one. Okay, so working with Macon Blair, who was the writer and the director mm -hmm. of I Don't Feel at Home at This World anymore, and now on Netflix. Nice. Um, thank you. That was subtle, right? Uh, I mean, it's great and it's also awkward as hell because i had to audition for that part <laughs> and, and and you know and, and of course i want to because i'm a professional actress and uh when you are trying to impress your husband with your subtle acting it is one of the hardest things to do yeah. because he sees you all the time mm -hmm. and so he knows what your subtle is and he knows when you're acting and so it was really like like I was shaking a little bit in my audition tape yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah, because you know I want to impress my husband, but I also mm -hmm. want to impress the director, and and um, and so that was a little awkward. But then I got the part, awesome. <laughs> which I earned it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then I unloaded the dishwasher. Um, <laughs> and uh, you didn't have to wait for a call. She did. Like you didn't have to wait for you got the part. It was just like uh, you you got it right. Like, oh no, I had to, I had to wait for my name to be posted on the page. And then, like, oh, Run up. Oh, I hope I crowd. get it. I hope I get it. And then it was uh, yeah, and that was. Yeah, it was a total musical theater. Yeah. Um, no, and, and it, it was a blast working with him and, and seeing um, another side to him that uh, I hadn't seen before as far yeah. as, he, well, it was his first time to ever direct yeah. a, a feature film and um, while we were married. And it, just seeing him patiently handle every sort of crisis situation that mm. could come up, it was also like, mm, look at this man <laughs> multitask and manage these people and, and um, do it with such kindness and empathy and sympathy because he's been in their shoes as an actor and, and wanting to do well and trying to do the best that they can and to see his uh, ability to not only tell a story well but treat the people that are helping him tell the story mm. in, in that fashion, it was just another way to kind of like I don't want to say fall in love with my husband again because that's the cliche sort of thing, but it was another side of like, holy shit, Macon is the fucking bomb, yeah. you know? And 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 uh, yeah, it was really great to 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 see him in that role and and for him to get 
the accolades and the pats on the back and all that because he's a super humble guy and he's not gonna be like yeah that was really good it was it's still kind of like a oh, I hope people like this and I hope I wasn't a jerk and do you think they did, like that sort of thing and so yeah. that wasn't a make an impression but it, it's it's nice to see him have people respect and, and like the story that he puts out because he yeah. works his fucking ass off for it. It shows. It, yeah. It's a wonderful product, and it's it's um, it's a t- <laughs> thank you for for everything that had to do with that project. You're welcome. Yeah, <laughs> I married the guy. Is there? Is, do you see any directing in your future? Yeah, I would like to sooner yeah. or later. Yeah, um, I'm just had a baby, and <laughs> so one of the things I'm trying to do is uh, start creating more content and projects that I think would be fun for me to watch and fun for people that are like me to watch, uh, specifically ladies that are in their uh, late 30s, early 40s-ish. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just trying to figure out how to do that balance of life and baby and, yeah. and creativity and stuff like that. But well, if you need any help with uh, Foley for fart chairs, you, uh, give me a call. Oh, no, dude. I'm yeah. going to write a piece specifically for you. <laughs> it's it's going to be a 15-minute scene of you just tooting away. Tooting, I have a child. Can you believe that? <laughs> I can't tell. Yeah. Um, so sw- sw- <laughs> switching gears to Mustang Island. Now, oh, th- cool. now that hasn't that hasn't gotten a wide release yet. It's been going. You got to see Mustang the- Island. Yeah, I got. To, I, I I stayed up till five last night watching it. Did you really? Yeah. I d- and I was like, I'll. Uh, it's and it starts out really quiet. So I was like, oh no, I'm gonna pass out. But it 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 start it it had me hooked the entire time. Wow. Yeah. I I loved it and and. <laughs> there were so so many times. I was like, "You can't do that to Lee!" Like th- th- How dare you! <laughs> yeah. So so you talked about the the director side. Yeah. Now acting in, with Megan. A- acting with Megan uh, on screen, and then it turning in, I mean, into a romantic thing. Was there was there any any moments where you're like, "Wait, are you are you acting at home when 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 we do this, this little cute stuff?" Or like. Like what? What? What was it like on on that set? On that set, it was it was great because um, our very close friend and wonderful person, Greg Elrod, wrote it and directed it, and then Nathan Smith, the cinematographer. Anyway, everybody that's involved in that movie are in some form or fashion a very close friend of ours. So mm-hmm. it was a nice, comfortable place to be. Nonetheless, uh, playing a relationship where you have to show that you're falling in love with somebody is always a very gentle, sacred process that uh, you want to make sure that you get right. When you're doing it with somebody that you've been married to mm-hmm. for seven years. Six years, oh good, seven years. We'll cut that out. Yeah, yeah, for a very long time, yeah, yeah. wonderful years. You just take two. Yeah. <clears throat> when you're married to somebody for a good amount of time, uh, to reenact and draw upon those feelings of, this is when I, uh, I remember when we made this move, and da 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 da, da. It, 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 it was a little like, oh my God, I'm exposing these kind of inner moments that are very secret between myself and Megan in my mind Megan is just like yeah let's just make out let's do this it, like <laughs> that's not what he said but he was just like he was very professional about it whereas I am like they're gonna they're gonna see us make out mode and I don't know about this sort they're of thing. gonna know yeah they're gonna know that we kiss <laughs> and sometimes we might do other things beyond that and so that was a little embarrassing intimidating mm-hmm. but Megan was totally cool the whole time because he's a pro and uh, I just get nervous making out with people on camera even when it's your husband but when it's your husband it's a little bit worse because people are like that's how they really do it <laughs> i bet that they totally french like that all the time you know now this is my movie french oh. <laughs> and uh, you I, I didn't know you so you have valley girls on set doing like like watching and going uh. eh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um but you know mustang island was was so oh, i i I say fun, but it was it was interesting to, to see that type of a movie again, and it's beautiful, right? It, it's it's beautiful because a lot of a lot of movies like that show the the big moments and the and the this is how they met and it was like they they found themselves on the dance floor and stuff like that, but this was all of the moments in between. Yeah. That this was oh let's get a little bit of them at breakfast, but mm-hmm. let's just follow them walking across the street and see how they how they mm. react in saying that. It's, it, well it's, it's it's the awkward parts of falling in love yeah, yeah. But it's the real part yeah exactly yeah, yeah. and let's I brush our teeth in front of each other <laughs> you know that's yeah. sort of like well this is how i brush my teeth i'm brushing, I'm brushing my teeth yeah <laughs> <laughs> cool, cool. Yeah, yeah let's go let's go back to the bedroom exactly. no, um, but, but that it it's it's something that that i really hope breaks through to that next level and and more people see it and we we don't get a lot of great black and white movies anymore and it, it adds a little bit to the style and and without without spoiling it i had to rewind the ending a couple times just because like yeah wait yeah. and then like the like your subtlety and all of that 
told the whole story. Like, and it's ah, it was it. It's great. I I love silence in movies. Yeah. I, I love because that's Craig Elrod is the master of putting silence in movies. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if his, he's got shorts online too that I totally recommend. He knows how to work in silence like nobody's freaking business. Where he's just like, well, just be quiet. I'm like, but. And he's like, and cut. That was it. That was perfect. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> so I just shut up, and I'm a good actor. <laughs> <laughs> Essentially. Yeah. Um, do you do you know what the what the distribution for for Mustang Island is? I coming know that up, they're working on something that like is uh, possibly maybe who knows like you, getting an indie movie distributed when you're not like uh, Angelita Jolie mm-hmm. or Brad Pitt or one of their children. It's a uh, it's a hit and miss, and so I'm really hoping that it gets picked up and. And gets distributed. So my fingers are tightly crossed. Mm-hmm. I, I hope so too. It's it's a wonderful movie. Seek it out. If it, I know it, it did. It did it just make it into another festival? Uh, it just came from Dallas Film Festival, yes. where we uh, he won best director for uh, Texas Regional uh, for, for uh, Mustang Island, and awesome. it was in competition for best picture. Yeah. So keep an eye on it. if you're if you're a film festival fan. Keep an eye on Mustang Island. Now it would beho- like. Oh, you can follow it on Facebook. Facebook oh, yeah. Well, yeah, Facebook will totally post uh, as much information as they can about Mustang Island. I think if you just search Mustang Island, not the actual island itself no. but mustang island the movie mm. it'll show up keep an eye on it it's a wonderful film uh now i can't not talk about camp camp oh let's talk about camp let's camp, talk about camp camp now what i mean the first season one was a very seemed like a very specific flavor of person what flavor spicy <laughs> um but uh and it it, it seemed like the the finale is what got is what sort of brought things into perspective for a lot of different characters. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, for, what was it? What was it like? Did they come? I cried when you watched the reaction. That was one of you guys cried. Was that? Oh, uh, that was Megan. It was Megan. I'm pretty sure it was Megan. I remember that. Um, it made me cry when I saw you cry watching yeah. that. <laughs> we. It, what was it? What was it like recording that? Scary as fuck. <laughs> because I'm not. I'm not a professional singer, and Miles can sing like anything. He was like, "Oh, give me like 20 words," and you're like, "Beverage, sock cuff, uh, chair," and I'm like, "Beverage, sock cuff, chair," and you're like, "That's the most beautiful song I've ever heard." Well, he's a Disney princess. Oh, he is. Yeah. He is a Disney princess. My favorite one. And um, I remember we were recording a couple episodes earlier in the season, and he was, "Leetty, do you sing?" And I was like, well, I mean, I can carry a tune or mm-hmm. something like that. And he was like, okay, okay. We're going to have you sing the Camp Camp Thing song for uh, the final episode. And I was like, <clears throat> okay. Um, uh, I'll need you to sing it a couple times and record it and send it to me so that I can practice it. And I practiced it for about a good two to three months before I had to come back and record it. And it actually became a lullaby that I sang to my kid at night because it is such a sweet little thing. It and is. he would ask for me to sing it uh-huh. at night. And so I would sing it to him to like really practice how to do it and everything like that. And it's one of Buck's things that I sing to him at night sometimes. And so when we recorded it, I was still like really nervous. And the first time I did it, I was like, and then Miles was like, that was great. And I was like, oh no, let me do it again. <laughs> and I did it again. And he was like, good job, Lee Eddie. And I was like, oh, thanks, Miles. Is, is that and thing that, the full name is the like, I did it. Yeah. I did it and nailed it. Uh, yeah. Sort it, of a thing. It was it was more of a it was more of a um it it was one of those moments where I was so freaked out about doing it and Miles was so cool and supportive and like come on fucking Miles, you know, like he was just a straight up come on, Lietti, like that sort of thing to where you, you can't do bad mm. around Miles and, and uh yeah, and so when I heard it in the episode, I was like, oh, they didn't auto-tune it. <laughs> I must have really, uh, Miles wasn't lying. He, no, you nailed it. Okay. Absolutely nailed it. Thanks, Just absolute highlight. Um, and from that, it seems like from what we've seen of Gwen in season two, she just seems to care a little bit more. Yeah. Like she, she's like, oh, these are people. I yeah. should I should probably care about their well-being. Let me do my job. Where did, did, did you sense that change? Did you make that change or, or was that a writing thing? I think it was a writing thing. Um, I will uh, confess that I was six and a half to nine months pregnant whenever I recorded every episode. So there might have been a little bit more of a maternal uh, baking instinct going on when I was doing Gwen because mm-hmm. there's like a heavy life inside of me. Motherfuckers! And so uh, I don't know if that communicates, but I really do think it came from the writing crew mm-hmm. that uh, there, there's a little bit more of a, let me do my job and let me have a softer-ish like size of a Q-tip sort of yeah. size coming through. And it definitely does. Thanks, dude. Um, That's so not me. That's just me reading their <laughs> words. <laughs> well, you're doing a damn good job. Well, on behalf of them, thank you. <laughs> Are they here? Can we... T- no. Well, um, so in, in season one, or in season one, in episode one, we meet Jen at the end of the episode. Uh-huh. How do you think that meeting went between Gwen and Jen? 
oh, dude, I'm sure that I saw her immediately reading like a butt stuff article in a cafe. And I was like, butt stuff. And she's like, yeah, butt stuff. I'm like, motherfucker, right? She's like, Jesus Christ. Yeah, dude. And we just talked about butt stuff articles the whole time. And we're back to porn. I know. Oh, I was thinking more like maintaining. Maintain. Oh, maintain. <laughs> butt stuff. You were thinking porn. So, Mark, what do you think about butt stuff? <laughs> Well, I, I think how they met is a, that's a wonderful idea yeah. to get it back. Um, but <laughs> um, what what has been your your favorite thing? Like we know that we know that episode six is uh, is a quarter matter semester episode. They announced yeah. it at the panel yesterday. Oh, really? So out of out of the episodes that uh, well half of the season at this point, yeah. out of the first six episodes. Was any of those your favorite to record, or is there something coming up that you could tease? Um, there is something coming up that's a little bit more Gwen focused. Mm-hmm. That uh, I had a really good d- job. Job. I did. A, had a really good job doing it. Uh, I had a really good time doing it because uh, it kind of explores a little bit of uh, Gwen's anxiety about where she is in life, as far as her job, as far as her anxiety, as far as her majoring in liberal arts, et cetera, et cetera, and how that has panned out, and how she sees it panning out in the future. Mm-hmm. And so. Uh, and and then the uh, the fun times that go along with uh, those challenges. So that was a lot of fun to record because I've been in those shoes of like, what have I done? Majored in theater. Ugh. And came from the heart. Out. Yeah, it came from the heart, yeah. and, and now, now it's it's working out a okay because I'm sitting here making fart jokes and talking about porn and butt stuff with you now. That's the. I mean, if if there's anything that I can send back to the theater department at my school, <laughs> it's it's uh, fart jokes and butt stuff. Yeah, that's gonna cure you for the rest of your life. <laughs> Thank that's you, my, theater degree. That's my shtick. Yeah. <laughs> fart jokes and butt stuff. And when you can't think of anything else, just do a hand job gesture, and you're all set. <laughs> oh god. And now I know how this interview's gonna end. Yeah. But um. <laughs> uh, how, how's your RTX been this, this so far? I mean, I know we're like like 20 minutes in, but how, how's your RTX been so far? I mean, I, I came yesterday to get my badge, mm-hmm. and uh, I brought my uh, my four-year-old with me and my sister Adorable. with me. Adorable. Thank you. Yes, he's the cutest. I think so, Spider too. Spider-Batman. Yeah, yeah, Spider-Batman. He yeah. was like, because I was like, Buck, there's going to be people dressed up, and he's like, I will be a Spider-Man Batman. And so, like, uh, okay, bro. And so he puts it on and running around. He was really excited to see all the RVB because he thinks they're robots. And I was like, you're a robot. Why don't you have your helmet on? And the guy's <laughs> like, it's fucking hot. And he was like, all right. <laughs> High five and that sort of thing. So that was really great, just kind of showing him cosplay for the first time, which mm-hmm. he's never really seen before. And uh, But today is my first official, like, I'm in. Mm-hmm. I'm going to put on some makeup and maybe some mascara. And, and now let's do this. And so we just did Project Improviser. Is that what it's called? Yeah. yeah, and it was a lot of fun. Thanks, Barrett. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm going to go do a signing with uh, Shayna and uh, Beck in a little bit, but it's always a blast coming here. And I feel like there's a lot more people here this year. I think there's 15,000 more that are supposed to be here this weekend. To make it a total of what? 65,000. Holy crap. Well, that's amazing. Mm-hmm. That's amazing. I'm always blown away about coming to RTX because, yeah, that's that's bonkers, dude. How often do you get stopped? Never. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Come on. I got stopped two times yesterday mm-hmm. one person wanted to know if you knew where i was where the bathroom was and uh, the other person was like hey you're great in day five and i was like you want a picture i'm like no okay and they kept going. And <laughs> you've made it you've made truly it. made it yeah exactly uh so i asked this last year and i'll ask it again okay. where do you want to see yourself by rtx 2018 2018 yeah. oh wait that's just next that's year, just next year. <laughs> Freak out for a second. I, know, I was like, that's 20 years in the future. <laughs> no, the idea is 2017 right now. What do I want to see by 2018? Uh, well, uh, oh, damn, Mark. Well, I'm a hard worker, <laughs> and so I hope that my passions and my art and my dreams keep continuing to carry me. This is a horrible answer. Uh, what, what just, you, just, 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 yeah, just at like, the end of it, um, and then what your whatever your special talent is. And, okay, great. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, by 2018, I just hope that we love each other a little bit more, and that lines are a little bit faster, and that my hair is a little bit more shiny, and um, was that it? Yeah, hand job. There we go. <laughs> Thank you so much, Lee. Absolutely. Oh, you told fun. me to save me at the Thank last you. part. <laughs> nice callback. Hand yeah. job callback. Brilliant. <laughs>